This week on Sail Away, we're here in Grenada and living aboard while beginning the restoration of this classic privilege catamaran. And the power tools are starting to come out. Like all of them. It's a light jig. I'm not going to do like a heavy jig. Not like a drunk Irish jig, just sort of like the nice is just getting started in Ireland kind of jig. Back on the beach. I always like this beach. But we also find time for some much needed R and R and to try to learn how to sail this big old girl. Upwind is hard. It's a big boat. There's work to be done on all fronts. Ever wish you could escape normal life and experience more of the world? So meet me on that island. Well, we did just that. We sold everything we owned on dry land and sailed away. Promise me that we'll sail away. Now we are roaming the planet in search of new adventures and sharing it with you every week. Just promise me that we'll sail away. So hit subscribe and escape normal with us. And I'll be yours forevermore. Come on, it's just that little button down there. That's it. We finally got ownership of our 1992 Privilege 482 catamaran. And although it can be hard living aboard while trying to restore an old catamaran like this, we're starting to make some progress. Whew. It is warm out. But we are over in Prickly Bay now because there are several things that you can get to, albeit slightly long walk, that we can't get to over in Woburn. Budget Marine, which we, uh, checked out this morning and now I am headed to True Value but True Value is of the longer of the walks for sure therefore today I'm on my trusty steed comes in handy once in a while we have a lot of little projects and big projects going on including a pop-up project which seems to keep happening but one of the projects is painting the inside of that fridge yeah, I think that'll do it in addition to that, I'm hoping they're going to have Lexan or plexiglass here. And uh, trying to fix that little helm step. So, for some aluminum. I'm on other things. After a little bit of run around, I got a nice long piece of angle aluminum. About 40 bucks US, so it wasn't too bad. I am starting to dig into this here helm pedestal. Obviously somebody has used this as a reinforcement. So that's coming off, but I'm also taking off this frame that it was built with. So I'm going to do at least three cross pieces in the middle. I think if I do all that, get it screwed down nicely, I think that's got to do it. I think for now, I'm just going to pull all this apart and see what happens. Get ingenuitive. We didn't even know this thing existed until we dug it out of the starboard stern. But it seemed really useful if we could get it to support weight again. Never easy to find the right <laughs> place on a boat to <laughs> do things like this. Nice and rolly for you too. Yeah. This just seems scary. I don't like this. One. Fair, fair. Now for about five more. There are many days on a boat wondering why do I have so many tools and why am I always working around them in storage? And then, in the course of a few days, you find yourself using every one of them. Apparently I've made an ungodly mess. <sighs> Whenever you live in a small space. I'm um, close, getting there. It'll be a lift. Yeah, pretty much. 
It'll help. It'll help a couple of the more vertically challenged folks that will be driving this boat. And yeah, I got it. Jeez, I made an insane mess because I had to notch out these lengthwise braces in order to get these cross braces in. But where it failed was crossways. And the pressure, we're looking at the bottom, the pressure made these edge pieces buckle in. Well, we still got the lengthwise being supported by the fiberglass, but now we've got aluminum pieces. But I really think this might be all it needs. We'll put it all together and uh, bounce around on it a little bit and see how it holds up. Before I do any of that, I think it's time to get out the shop vac. This is pretty bad. Pretty bad. It's nighttime and you're still going. Yeah. I got these kick ass work lights now. Good. Fancy. We'll see if it, like, you know, can handle me dancing a jig on it. It's a light jig. I'm not going to do like a heavy jig. Not like a drunk Irish jig. Just sort of like the nice just getting started in Ireland kind of jig. Mm -hmm. It's like, eh, I didn't really want to come out tonight, but if I'm out, I might as well dance a jig. I've only had three pints. That kind of jig. I'll work my way up to like midnight, midnight jig. Cool. Do a little surgery on the teak and then uh, we'll have a fun, fun new platform. I think it's kind of cool. No matter how never ending our project list may seem, usually we're smart enough to cut ourselves a break and just go have some fun once in a while. And this tiny beach on Prickly Bay was a favorite hangout of ours during our COVID lockdown two years ago. Back on the beach. I always like this beach. Where's your frisbee? It's like I don't know. Dude, get it out. Being monohull sailors for 25 years, we're taking plenty of time to learn how to sail this thing. We're not expert catamaran sailors yet on our second sail. Upwind is hard. It's a big boat. Definitely got some stuff to learn about all of it. Luff tension. This thing definitely needs more outhaul and there's almost no room left. But we're going upwind at about 45, 40 to 45 apparent, doing 7.7 .7 knots and about 14 knots of wind. I mean, that, that seems pretty good. It's exciting, it's a good workout. Whew. Definitely need some more tension on that main. I think we probably should move those. like shit. We can do better. Shit looks decent.
But soon the sailing lesson was over, and it was time to dig out the power tools yet again. All right, well, you ready to smash some chain? Smash it. But we discovered a really, a really bad link. But that one is smoked. So, we're going to cut it out of there. And we have this C-Link that you basically put in place of it and smash the rivets down. And hopefully it works better than a rusty link. There you are. Cat kid. Good. I read it all. You read the whole thing already? Yeah. Alright, what are you gonna read now? I don't know. Cool. Good talk. I was just sitting here drinking my coffee, staring out across the water as I do most mornings. And next thing you know, this happened. Uh, being the bad YouTuber I am, I didn't get you a proper before picture. But maybe you've seen it in some other shots. Uh, these pieces were looking pretty rough, just varnish that's completely done. Instead of varnish, uh, teak sealer. This is a Starbright version. They've got a bunch of different brands. Protects against UV and salt and sun and all that so that your wood grain doesn't start to break down too soon. Alright, well I'm going to pull the rest of these off and just sit here and sand in a zen-like state while drinking my coffee. Yeah, just sand. When you're looking at wood, see how there's lines in the wood? That's called the wood grain, the way the lines run. And when you sand, you always want to sand with the grain, but this way, never across it. Just sand it that way. Yeah, you see how it's changing color? It's getting lighter. I know, it's hard, isn't it? I've been making some progress on these pieces. And uh, that's a space heater. Why, you ask? Do we have a space heater in the middle of the Caribbean? Well, it's a funny story. And I swear, living on a boat, we have found stupid workarounds for the stupidest things. <sighs> so, I've got this nice, rigid, orbital sander. When you start it, it slowly ramps up. It doesn't just take off, which is really nice. It's like a kind of a safety feature, kind of a, you know, don't wear groove in your wood feature because you got it sitting on it. But our inverter has sort of like a power save mode where if there's nothing on the boat that needs 120 volts, it just puts out 100. But because this thing ramps up its power, it never gets to full speed. Because it doesn't demand the full 120 from the inverter, I guess is the best way I can put it. So then when I figured out it was going to do that when I was running on the inverter, I'm like, well, I guess I'll just run the generator for a while and do some sanding. Generator won't start. I think it's a relay problem in the start relay. Today, we are tricking the inverter using a space heater. But you turn that space heater on, the inverter kicks up to 120, and this thing runs fine. And it's just so dumb. Like, yeah, I gotta run a space heater to get my inverter to give my sander 120 volts.
you just lick it? Phase two. This is teak sealer. For areas where your teak is out in the sun and maybe getting salt water spray and lots of uh, abuse, uh, a lot of people are going to this teak sealer because you only have to rebrush it every four, or five, six months, depending on where you are and how much wear water. and tear it gets. And with salt water. Right, but it doesn't. It doesn't uh, start coming apart like varnish does. And then you don't have to sand it or do anything. You can literally just brush it right on. Yeah, you just do two coats, one right after another pretty much. And that's kind of it. Well, that's happening. And this happened sort of midday, so you're not getting the full effect of the grain. I'll try to get a shot of it a little bit later. I think it came out really damn good. Not only that, but I shined up all the hinges, remounted them. So I put nice big fat screws in there. I refilled the holes. They were all nice and dry. Then I just cut off the uh, ends of the screws so that they sat much more flush. Everything looks good. And I am hot, and so is Rivers, and we're going swimming. <sighs> That's what's happening right now. It's been an exhausting morning. I'll tell you about the generator later. Yeah, the generator.